want to welcome everyone to the recording of the Sunday morning service here at the Elmore Church of Christ. And like all of the members, we're missing each other, and we're, there's a few of us here that, uh, to uh, present this lesson, these lessons to you, and we just hope when you hear them on, your, on the Internet that, uh, that you will enjoy your worship and, and uh, to recommit to God in, in every service of your life and, and examine yourselves and, and find the great hope we have in Christ, even though we're not being able to come together as we love and we like to. And I know I personally I'm missing everybody. I, I, I miss the hugs and I miss the smiles and, and the, the greetings and, uh, and I just can't wait till we get back together. And uh, I think it's a taste of looking more forward to heaven. When we all get back together in heaven, we're looking forward to being back here at worship here at Elmore. And we're grateful for the people that are watching that don't even attend this congregation. And uh, we have a website that has all our elders' phone numbers on it. If there's any need that you have, or if you would like a Bible study, or any questions about what's going on to, in this uh, filming, uh, please contact us. And, uh, and I know family members and friends that watch this, we just hope you get a blessing out of it, and we're grateful that you uh, take the time to, to look at this uh, service this morning. We want to remind our members that uh, either take a break in the middle of the of the video or uh, take communion or take it at the end, whichever way is more comfortable for you. And if you have trouble getting supplies for communion, uh, just make contact us and we'll meet you at the church building and make arrangements. But I think a lot of people uh, have been taken care of on that. If anybody has a need for that, we, we don't want you to, to neglect your uh, taking of the communion uh, every Lord's Day. We're just, if we can help you with that at all, we, we'd love to do that. I'd like to make a few announcements uh, before we begin uh, serving this morning. Uh, Terry Carlisle is going to have our opening prayer here in just a few moments. Stan Taylor is going to bring the message to us. And Jimmy Davis will have our closing prayer. Jimmy And, and uh, Ross Meeks is our sound man and cameraman. I want to mention his name. He is doing an outstanding job, and we're grateful for his insight on, on what's going on here. And, and uh, we just know that you're going to enjoy the singing that's been uh, adapted to this service. I know my wife and I last Sunday when we worked together at our kitchen table, we really enjoyed that and we just know you're going to look forward to doing that too. Before we begin, I'd like to make some announcements. Uh, we had a card from the congregation at Crossville, Tennessee that we had helped in, as tornado victims, but they, they support us in the Antioch, Antioch Initiative and the congregation at Cookville also. They're up there close to each other. They both support our work here at Elmore. We want to, they, they send a thank you card for some money we sent them, but we want to remember that congregation, so many more in the Nashville area and uh, east of Nashville. I think it's like an 80 mile stretch there that uh, had some severe tornado damage. And while we think we got our hands full with this virus, you know, those people are still picking up the pieces up there. We want to help them and and remember them in prayer. And we want to remember our sick. We have a long list, and uh, we'd love for you to get a copy of this bulletin, but Alice Stewart would remember her, and, uh, and Tracy and Ron and her whole families are taking care of her, and uh, we uh, want to remember Ken Maureen Krause as uh, she is in pain and needs prayers, and uh, they can't find out what's causing the problem, and this is something that's not just been going on for a little while. Uh, we just uh, want to keep her and our other sick in prayer. Deborah Knight, Robert and Mary Knight's daughter, she is she's sick with a, a respiratory infection, but she's uh, tested negative for the for the virus, which is a blessing. But we need to remember that family. And Brad Vera, which uh, needs our prayers, is back in the hospital uh, after he thinks his uh, cancer may be back. They're running tests and trying to treat him on that. And uh, there's a list here of things to remember, too. Pray for those whose jobs are on hold, who uh, may be losing their jobs. That's a lot of people. Uh, and uh, restaurant businesses and uh, clothing stores, different things are closed down. We remember those people and, and try to reach out to them. Pray for the kids whose school year must be completed at home away from their friends. And uh, we know that's a... 
that's a big burden on families, on taking care of their children when they're normally in school. And uh, we do need to pray for our students and pray for those who work in the medical field and in law enforcement. Uh, pray for our truck drivers, workers, and essential businesses that they will be protected. And pray for wisdom for our state, local, and our national leaders. And we are grateful for, uh, I am, for uh, how things are being handled. I want it to be over with. Uh, I'm blessed to be one of the essential businesses. Uh, I even have paperwork to show. I'm, I've never been called essential before, but uh, uh, but it's still uh, not normal. And uh, we just pray for our businesses and, and, our, and our leaders. And last but not least, we have a little picture here in our bulletin we're getting to look at of uh, Sister Wilma Stowell. She's opening one of the many birthday cards it says that came from the Elmore family. She turned 97 years old last week, and we just love her and her daughter, and we just uh, pray God's blessings on them. It's like us, they can't be here right now, and we're just grateful for her sweet smile and, and uh, her great attitude as she celebrates her 97th birthday.
Heavenly Father, we uh, humbly come before you and just thank you, God, for loving us and taking care of us in every way. And, and uh, we totally depend on you. And it's times like these that we realize how much we do depend on you. And, uh, and that's a good thing, that we realize that we need you. And as the song says, that we need you every hour. And uh, we just thank you for your love for us, and we know that you're there. Uh, and uh, that you'll see us through this like you've seen us through everything in our lives and uh, and we know that uh, you showed it throughout your word that you are always going to be there and uh, that you know what happens before it ever happens uh, even though we don't and sometimes we uh, uh, worry about things and, uh, and we know that we shouldn't we should depend on you just like the birds of the air and the flowers in the fields, Lord. And we're much more important than them. So important to you that you sent your son to, to die for us. And as the world celebrates uh, the resurrection, uh, we want to celebrate the resurrection as we do every time we meet. We think about Jesus and his love for us and humbling himself, become a servant, a bond servant, it says. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, we'll always remember what he, what he did for us. And, and then by doing that, uh, we go into these type of events that are happening throughout the world uh, without fear, with hope and peace that passes understanding, and knowing that, uh, that you love us so much that you give us your son and that you have a, a place prepared for all of us in heaven, Lord. Just uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the comfort we have through Jesus. We pray for those who have been mentioned by Marshall that are in our bulletin, Lord, that for Alice Stewart, we know that she's been through a lot of treatments already and that she's taken uh, some medicine, Lord, that, uh, uh, that probably uh, tough for her to take. And just pray that you be with her and with Tracy and Ron and her whole family, Lord. And pray for Maureen. We know that she's in pain and, and uh, she's been in pain. And Lord, we know it's hard on her and Ken. And we just pray for them, Lord. Pray for Deborah Knight. Just pray, Lord, that you just help her with her uh, breathing. And I'm just glad it's not COVID-19, Lord, but we know that it's serious. And we just pray, Lord, to be with her. Be with Brad. Uh, just hate to see his cancer coming back, Lord. And just pray, Lord, that he'll get right with you and he'll stay right with you, Lord. We love him. And we want him to, to go to heaven with all of us. We just pray that you... Help him to see uh, uh, your hand and his and work in his life, and uh, Lord, that he'll just love you. Pray for, like we said, for the churches that are in Tennessee that had the tornado damage, and just glad that we were able to help them as they help us. And that's what it's all about, Lord, just helping one another, helping us through this and through all things in our lives, and and uh, just pray, Lord, you continue to be with all those who are mentioned that are sick. We know there's a lot of people that are sick in our congregation. And I know there are a lot of people that are uh, anxious right now. And just pray, Lord, that you give them peace. Just thank you for staying. Just look forward to hearing his message, Lord, and just be with him as he presents the message, Lord. And just thank you for him and all the elders here at Elmore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank everybody for worshiping with us and joining in our worship at the Elmore Church of Christ. What a blessing it is to be able to come together even when we are not physically touching or seeing each other, we are able to communicate, we're able to share, we're able to encourage and strengthen each other. We're able to touch some people maybe that uh, would not be touched otherwise. And so we're so thankful that uh, each of you are here with us. And uh, we also want you to know, for those who are uh, maybe not as familiar with the Elmore Church of Christ, uh, we want you to know that our goal is to worship and serve God in spirit and in truth. We strive to let God lead rather than our own desires, and we diligently work to let God's love show foremost in everything that we do. We work very diligently for these things. We want you to know right up front there are some things we believe God expects from us. Jesus Christ came, he died, he paid the price for each of us. And he expects us through our faith in him to do some things. We need to hear the word, we need to study it, read it, any other way that we can come in contact with it, we need to do that. Romans 10, 17 tells us to do that. We need to believe that God is, that he rewards us, through Christ, his son, Hebrews 11, 6. We need to repent of our sins, Luke 13, 3. We need to confess that Christ is God's son, Romans 10, 10. We need to be baptized, Acts 2, 38, and many other passages that tell us to do these things. And we need to continue steadfast, Romans 15, 58, knowing there's a reward for those of us who remain steadfast in those things. This morning, I'd like for us to consider a verse in Acts 12, verses 2 through 4. And the reason I've chosen this as the beginning verse is because it has two words that uh, talk about the same time period. Uh, it's only found in the King James Version 1611 using both of these phrases. And it reads as such. Herod killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he took, put him in prison and delivered him to four quintillions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now notice that, that, again, that's the King James 1611 translation. In this, there are two words that are used for the same time period. One is the Passover, the other is the word Easter, but they're referring to the same time period. The word Easter comes from the Anglo-Saxon word Astra. Astra was the pagan goddess of spring and fertility. It was the symbol as we use it today, many, many people use all kind of different ones to use, impl in implicating fertility, implicating the growth, new growth, whether it be in new plants or whether it be in rabbits or eggs, Easter lilies, whatever it is, it's the idea of the new growth that uh, came out of this word, estra. The King James Version, uh, as was said, uh, is the only one that has. By this time, this term had been established by the masses. Notice I said the masses, not necessarily Christians. It was already by the masses, though, was used as a time to celebrate the transition from the bleak, dark days of winter and transition into the hope and brightness of spring. So by this time, again, the, the for those who would be doing the translating, they would have simply used this in terms of this is a time period. This is a time period where we're going from winter into spring, whereas the more exact translation would have been that of the Passover. The Days of the Unleavened Bread was established for the children of Israel, and it dates all the way back to the original Passover when they left Egypt. For those of you who are Bible scholars, Bible students, you are familiar with the fact that when the children of Israel were in Egypt, they were enslaved there, 
and God sent a number of pestilence upon them, and the final one was that it was to be the death of the firstborn, and there was blood that was to be put upon the post uh, of, of every home uh, that uh, were faithful to God, that believed in God, and they were to stay inside of those doors, and when that was done, and in the process of this, they were to eat this meal, this Passover meal, and that in the process of this, this was to be done just before they left out of Egypt. And so this was this time period that was referred to. The next area, though, that uh, could, should be considered in this, and one that has been kind of uh, uh, joined together in this by many today, is that Christians celebrated the resurrection of Christ then, as we do now, as has been mentioned earlier, every Sunday. It wasn't something that was done once a year for Christians. It was celebrated every Sunday, every first day of the week. So you had, during this time, the intermingling of some things that uh, we see today. This idea of celebrating of spring, uh, uh, bursting out after the dead of winter, and it's the idea of the Passover, and now we have the Christians uh, that's been intermingled, but the Christians, again, every first day of the week, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we celebrate uh, that uh, very resurrection of Jesus. One thing to make note of is that the Bible does not encourage the celebrating of Easter as Easter. It does not say that you cannot celebrate celebrating spring because we all enjoy the fact that spring is now bursting out after the dead of winter. So it's a very good thing for us. It also, it also teaches us and encourages us to celebrate life. Celebrate life. And so it's a time for us as we are, have gone through the, the, the hard times of winter, and especially those who live in, 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 in the, either in countries or in the northern part of the United States or, or maybe even further up north or other places where they, they have this cold, cold, dark, long winter and then when spring comes it's like that which is dead now becomes life. And so it's a wonderful thing uh, when, this cellar, when this transition takes place. When you consider this current pandemic that we're in right now for many people they feel like they're in the winter of their life. It feels like the dark, bleak, hopeless time when it seems there's nothing to be gained. It seems like it will never get through this, especially some who are in their homes, they cannot get out, some of the older people especially who, are, who, who don't have contact with individuals or those who are in a hospital and they're going through perhaps in, 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 in their minds perhaps the hardest times of their life and they have no human contact from the outside from those that they love. And they feel as if it's a time of such darkness, such bleakness, that perhaps they think they'll never get the reality is we hold the answer within our hands. We hold the answer within our hands. In winter, trees are bare and leaves. They appear to have no life. But then the spring comes. The buds start coming out. I get excited sometimes when, 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 I, fir when I see the first beginnings of, of new life. Uh, there was a time when I did a little farming. I haven't done much in years, but there was a time, and I can remember just walking in the field, and I would see that plant when it would come up. The first, when I first saw it, that new life, it was something just exciting about it that made me have hope that maybe, maybe something good is coming. You know, the thing that the trees needed was light and warmth and water and food. You know what? Many people need more than anything else. They need light 
They need the light of God's word. They need the warmth of God's love as it comes through us oftentimes. They need the water of life, the living water, the water that when we take of that water, we never die. And they need that break that will sustain us. And that Jesus says, when we take it, we never hunger. In Luke 24, in verse 10, we have the names of uh, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women that were in a very dark and hopeless time of their life. Life seemed gone. Hope was lost. John 20, verse 7, gives us the same account of them going to that uh, tomb as it does in Matthew. Here's what it says in John 27. Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. She was weeping. In her mind, all was lost. There was no hope. But it continues and it says she stooped. And let me tell you, sometimes when we really want to see the light, when we really want to see light, like, in the, like when we're, we're, we're going out into the plowed field and, and planted, and, and when we first look, we don't see until we stoop, and then we can see. And it was here. She stooped. And she looked into the tomb. You see, hope was not lost. Sunday was coming. Matthew 26 and 1, again the same account. Now after the Sabbath, it was after Saturday, it was Sunday, it began to dawn down the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, the one we just mentioned, came to look at the, into the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. And the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And its appearance was like lightning. Its clothing was white as snow. I want you to think of this, this dark time, this dark time in their, in their life. She was weeping. She thought there was that all hope was gone, and now this appearance like light. Like lightning. Clothing is white as snow. Matthew 26 points out that the guard shook for fear of him. They became like dead men. But notice what the angel said to the women. Not to the guards. He said this to the women. Do not be afraid. You see, for Christians, for those who are, who, who are seeking Christ, there's no reason to fear. There's no reason to be afraid. There's life. There's life. There's a blessing for us. It continues on, do not be afraid, for I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus. He's been crucified. They didn't deny that Jesus had been crucified, but what they did say was, He's not here. He is risen just as he said he would. You see, God always does what he said. Jesus always does what he said. Just as he said. And then the angel invited and said, come and look where he was lying. They left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy. You see, that time of darkness and hopelessness had now turned to great joy. That's what can happen with Jesus. They couldn't see the light until the sun came in. The same sun that brings life today. When the sun is seen, hope is restored. Consider some of these. The ladies at the tomb. Cleophas and one other as they walked near Jerusalem the day uh, that Jesus rose. The 11 ap uh, apostles and some other disciples that were in the closed room. 
Eight days later, apostles and other disciples, Thomas included, as he thrust his hand into his side, because Thomas had said, I'll never believe until I'm able to do that. And Jesus allowed it. Then you have the apostles and others in Acts 1, verses 2 through 12, as they're waiting, uh, as he's about to ascend into heaven. You have Saul, Paul, the apostle out of Caesar. He's on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, 1 through 18. All of these, he went through a time of despair and hopelessness. But they also came into hope because of the light. You see, hopelessness and fear were cured. Jesus used an example of what had to happen in order for this to take place. Numbers 21, verses 8 through 9, Jesus said, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh on it, shall live. Now, What's happened is the children of Israel have gotten away from God. They've forgotten to do the things that God says. They've strayed away. They've rebelled. God allowed snakes to come into that camp. There was pestilence there that, that they had gotten to the point that many were dying and they were so afraid and they turned to God. And I'm hoping that this, that this today, this pandemic that we've got today is going to turn a lot of people God, I hope it does. It should. But the only question is, is are their hearts that are ready so that they will turn to God? If they are, then much can happen. And that which is hopeless turn into something wonderful. Moses made a serpent of brass. He put it on the pole just as God had told him. And it came to pass that, if, that those who beheld live. What a wonderful thought, those who beheld, even today, those who behold God, they live. It's a blessing available to us. John 3, 14 through 15, Jesus refers back to this very account. And he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believes on him should not perish, but how? Eternal life. See, Jesus was lifted up on that cross. And every person that will look to him will find life. They'll find light. They'll find hope. But you've got to look to him. You've got to seek after him. You've got to quit seeking after yourself. In so doing, God will bless you. Matthew chapter 5, verses 4. 14 through 16. He tells each of us, he's talking here to those who are followers of Christ. Listen closely. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, I believe that we as Christians have a wonderful opportunity. We've got an opportunity to let a light shine in a dark world. If I had a candle here and could turn the lights out, if I lit the candle when all the lights was on, it'd be very difficult to see the candle. But if I turned the lights off, that candle would shine brightly. You see, sometimes it's when it's really dark, like it is right now for many people, that that light will shine the best. You may not be able to go to their home. They may not be able to come here. But there's ways to reach out to people. We have phones. We can text. We can email. 
We've got the YouTube. We've got Facebook. We've got, got all kinds of things. The whole world is, uh, of the uh, of media is beginning to open up to us right now, and we're seeing more and more how it can be used. We need to use it, brethren. We need to use the ways so that this light will shine because this light is the cure for this world. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Stanley. Excellent thoughts. Let's bow together. Our God, our Heavenly Father, we exalt you, we praise your name. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with your love, for blessing us with a Savior. As Stan had mentioned this morning, as we look back on what happened at the cross, we realize that that event was the most important event that has ever happened in the human race and human history. And Lord, because it gives us a way that we can stand before you justified in that wonderful blood that was shed there at that cross. Help us to reflect back on that, not only today, but every day of our life, Lord. And when we get up in the mornings, help us to reflect back on us being your children and how you bless us in this this new day you've given us to be your hands and your feet and your light Lord we thank you for your congregation that meets here at Elmore we know we're going through unusual times we're going through periods that uh, so unusual for us we've never seen this happen before but we know that you do open doors even when we can't see them all the time, but you give us opportunities to serve you in different ways. And as we change our routines in life, Lord, help us to always keep in mind we're looking for ways to serve you better and to bring your wonderful message of the cross to a sinful and dying world. Truly, that is the light that this world needs. Lord, we're thankful for those of our number that we've been praying for and those that are undergoing tests and undergoing treatments at this time. They give the doctors and those that are making decisions for their care the right decisions to make. Heavenly Father, be with us now through this week. Help us to conduct ourselves in a way that we can hear those wonderful words one day pronounced to all this, the world. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. And Lord, we're so looking forward to being with you and being with our brethren when we can all be together. We can hug one another. We can just be with one another all the time. And Lord, we, we miss each other's company so much. But we're thankful that we can be together in this way this morning. Continue to bless us need to be with all those that are suffering at this hour. And this is our prayer in the name of Christ. Amen.